Hey guys, it's Adrian with prices of DDR5 memory having come down recently. Companies such as XPG, the gaming arm of ADATA, have released memory kits that strive to serve the fastest memory performance. While there are certain memory modules from other brands that focus on pure memory speed, XPG decided to focus on improving the listed cast latency of an existing memory kit that they have. In this video, I'll be reviewing the XPG Lancer DDR5 6000CL30 memory kit. This kit is an upgrade of their previous DDR5 6000CL40 Lancer. While both types of memory kits share the same speed, their cast latencies differ with the newer CL30 having a tighter setup. Here's a quick rundown of the Lancer DDR5 6000CL30 specs as provided by ADATA. As mentioned, we have a test unit that has a speed of DDR5 6000 MTs or mega transfers per second. It has an error correcting code for correcting corrupted data memory and of course it also has RGB support from major motherboard manufacturers such as ASUS, ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI. Also forgot to mention the suggested local Retail price of the Lancer runs at 8,260 Philippine pesos. However, I look at some official retailers online and prices are much lower than the SRP. Even lower when bought during specific promo periods by these online platforms. Now let's go over the full specifications of the uh, memory module that we're reviewing. There are several speeds available in XPG's list, but specifically for the review unit sent, it has 6000 MTs and its corresponding timings would be 30, 40, 40 for Expo, which is AMD's profile for memory speed, while the stock configuration would run on DDR5 4800 with timings of 40, 40, 40. Dimensions are at a 133.35 by 40 by 8 millimeters, and these correspond to the length, width, and height. Also, the memory kit comes with a limited lifetime warranty. Also, finally, here's the SKU list of the DDR5 Lancer black and white models. In the Philippines, we are currently limited to the 5,200 to 6,000 MTs. 16 by 2 gigabyte dual kits benchmarks we'll go through several synthetic and gaming benchmarks and go against two other memory modules on this amd r5 7600 system the lancer ddr5 6000 cl30 will be compared against the cl40 version of itself and the faster fury renegade ddr5 7200 cl38 Will the faster, albeit with higher latency, be able to beat a slower but lower latency memory? We'll find out soon. First benchmark that I ran is coming from the performance test application by Passmark Software. First is, you can see here, is the series of tests involving uh, Passmark's performance test memory test suite. And here are the results from the test and looking at all of the other scores of the entire memory test topping the list is the xpg cl30 lancer while following a bit farther away is the cl40 version and very close to it is the fury renegade ddr5 7200 now going through the individual tests being flashed the xpg lancer ddr5 6000 cl30 held the top spot for all of the best tests conducted. Second place mostly went with the CL40 with the CL38 DDR5 7200 memory trailing behind a bit. Now we go over to IDA 64's memory benchmark. So the graph is a bit busy if you look at it but I'll zoom in each entry to make things more legible. There are four subtests in the memory benchmark, namely copy, write, read, and latency. It's fewer than the Passmark software's memory test suite. It actually focuses more on the broader aspects of memory use like copy, operations, write, and read. First, the uh, Fury Renegade 7200CL38 module. It actually performed the best amongst the three memory kits in the write operations subtest. 
clearly outclassing either the CL30 or CL40 Lancer. However, it lost out on the copy and read subtests by a very small margin to the CL30 Lancer. For the latency test, it scored 79.3 nanoseconds, 0.5 nanoseconds faster than the CL30 Lancer, yet strangely, the CL40 Lancer had a better latency time than the CL30 Lancer with the Fury Renegade only having a 0.3 nanosecond advantage to the CL41. And since we're measuring in nanoseconds, that's technically a negligible difference. Since it is essentially faster than when counting from 1 to 2. The CL30 DDR5 6000 Lancer, meanwhile, has a decent performance as mentioned. It had advantages in copy and read operations. And of course, the last in this par particular uh, list is the CL40 DDR5 6000 Lancer. Its latency, however, was lower than the CL30 version, as mentioned, which kind of runs counter to the listed gas latency. And I if you here with the IDA64 benchmark. It looks like I'll have to uh, perform some more testing later on to see how this actually works. The next benchmark test that we did, or I did, is the Cinebench benchmark. Now, this is a straightforward CPU-based synthetic benchmark which just tests the overall speed of rendering a scene. Aiding the speed of the CPU is of course the memory module working alongside it. I selected the 10 minute stability test to ensure that the system is running at an optimal temperature. Hence, in this test, the CL30 Lancer won by a degree thanks to its lower latency. This is followed by the CL40 Lancer and finally the Fury Renegade DDR5 7200. Which is kind of weird because it's faster even if and it has a higher cast latency than the CL40. However, I have to provide a disclaimer that I ran Cinebench for the Fury Renegade memory several times to make sure I'm not getting the score wrong. But it's actually getting beaten even with the CL40 memory. Strange. Now, let's go back to another uh, multi-test synthetic benchmark and we'll go with PC Mark 10. It does a suite of tests that cover from the most basic of user browsing sites to user working with office documents, creating uh, spreadsheets or use of simulated graphics rendering, and a small dose of 3D Mark for game tests. I ran the benchmark twice and got the high score from each run. Strangely, unlike the performance test memory test results, the CL30 Lancer was behind the CL38 DDR5 7200 Fury Renegade by just a few points. The Fury Renegade actually edged out the Lancer 6000 CL30 with its higher score in productivity tasks, while majority of the other tests were all in favor of the Lancer CL30 by just a small margin. That is why the Fury Renegade ended up edging out the Lancer CL30. As for the CL40, well, it ended up being last place. Now, let's go over to some gaming benchmark tests that I made. We'll start off with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. The game settings are on 1080p resolution with a high preset and DLSS turned off. The internal benchmark test is used and CapframeX X records the test. This is to ensure that I am able to replicate all of the stuff that happens in the game as is with no random change in environment behavior. Now the results show the Lancer DDR5 CL30 having a narrow lead of 70.1 average FPS to the Fury Renegade's 69 nice average FPS. While it narrows further with the CL40 model, which has a 69.6 .6 average FPS. 
the P99 and 1% lows also have similar narrow gaps between each memory module tested, however. Now, let's go over to the next game, which is Counter-Strike 2. I tested it again on high settings at 1080p resolution. Unlike Cyberpunk, which has an onboard benchmark tool, I only used CapFrame Access timer-based benchmark recording to get a good measure of a practice session with bots. However, one thing I do note that due to the randomness of how rounds tend to affect the overall recording of metrics, as I end up having some rounds taking too long, some taking too short, and some may have a little bit more usage of equipment like smoke generators and uh, they kind of affect the overall performance. And the result I ended up with has the Fury Renegade having a higher P99 FPS with 425. CL30 Lancer had the at 423.7 FPS and the CL40 Lancer at 408.8. For the CL30 Lancer, it performed closely with the Fury Renegade but did suffer from a poorer 1% low FPS recorded which actually caused it to fail a bit or fall down in its place compared to the Fury Renegade. And unfortunately there was a problem with the way the CL40 Lancer was played for the metrics recording session and some abnormally skewed data due to some variables not triggered like smoke cover or flashbangs during the time data recording I actually forgot to throw them. I can actually recreate it later on. Let's discuss about the summary and verdict of the XPG Lancer DDR5 6000 CL30. It sits at a spot that bridges the performance gap of high-speed DDR5 memory. But while having a DDR5 speed of 6000 MTs, it is still much, a, much lower than other higher-end memory kits in the market, like what we have in the Fury Renegade. XPG tries to offset that particular disparity between higher memory speed and the modest 6000 MTs memory it has by having a better cast latency. Different tests on the memory module showed mixed results and some possible biases. And some apps like Performance Test seem to favor the Lancer 6000 CL30, while others like IDA64 have preference on faster memory speed. And the same goes for benchmark apps and video games that I've also tested. It would somehow depend on the application's programming to see how well memory is utilized. But even so, while performance of the CL30 Lancer 6000 can match that of a CL3872200 memory like the Fury Renegade, the main thing buyers would actually look, especially in the Philippines, is its affordability. XPG played its card right by offering the Lancer 6000 CL30 at a more modest price of 8260 for a DDR5 memory kit, it should compete well with other brands' CL30 DDR5 6000 offerings that I've seen being sold online. Its combination of speed and latency is able to come up against that of higher memory speed but has higher latencies so it's a definitely excellent trade-off.